We begin tonight with some breaking news. Tonight, a tense freeway standoff brings Bay Area traffic to a standstill. Hello and welcome. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. You're watching Nightbeat on Air, Nightbeat.tv online. Protesters have flooded the streets, taking over 580 in Oakland. Westbound lanes are closed between Park Boulevard and Lakeshore Avenue. Nightbeat's Betty Yu has been watching the situation unfold now. Over the past few hours, she joins us now by phone. Betty, what are you seeing? Hi, Veronica. It's been a very tense night out here as officers try to divert this very large crowd, hundreds of protesters off the freeway. Now, at one point, they were on both sides of the 580, and they brought traffic to a standstill and shut it down. Now, we've seen, I have seen at least one arrest out here when one man tried to climb over that center divide, and then another person threw a bottle at an officer. I've seen a few acts of vandalism, vandalism out here, but no major reports of injuries. I will tell you, though, that this crowd is very fired up. They're disappointed. They're frustrated. They're angry, not just at the grand jury's report, but they want justice for their family members, their friends, people here in the Bay Area who have been shot and killed by police. So we've also seen a lot of signs out here for Oscar Grant. All of this is bringing back really painful memories. Uh, for them. So that's why they're out here calling for justice. Out has been really fluid throughout the night, too. So it's been a challenge for, for us as media and for the department to stay on top of them. And Betty, and Betty, we've moved you indoors uh, for reasons of safety. We know that you've been down on the corner of Grand around the Lakeshore exit of 580. We're still looking at live pictures. There is a huge crowd that has amassed right outside of the Walgreens. They took over the freeway for some, for some time. Um, it looks as though traffic Traffic is moving again. Do you have any idea where police have diverted traffic to? You know, from our standpoint, I believe that the crowd has moved uh, westbound. And so from where I'm standing, not too far from Walgreens that you just mentioned, the crowd is dispersing and things are opening. So I believe they are heading westbound. And again, where, you, where you've been, um, the Lakeshore Shopping District, there's lots of, of retail located in that district. Have there been any reports of any looting? So far, no reports from where we were standing, although at times the crowd did get very unruly. We did see a few protesters throw some rocks at cars in the area. For the most part, I will say that it has been relatively peaceful, but definitely the mood here, the tone here is frustration and anger. And Monica? what have protesters been saying? Have you had a chance to speak with any of them? Yes, I did speak to many of these protesters. They, they're shouting everything from justice for Michael Brown to pigs go home, and they are referring to the Oakland Police Department. So we have a lot of localized frustration, but also on the national level. level general frustration as well. And they tell me that this is their last resort. This is the only way that they can get their voices heard. All right, Betty Yu, she is live there on the scene down at Lakeshore and Grand right off the 580. Again, we're still looking at some live pictures there. You see that traffic has come to a standstill, and that is because thousands of protesters, more than a thousand protesters, have taken over the freeway. You're looking at live pictures right now of the 580 right off of the Grand and Lakeshore Avenue exit. That is Oakland, and as you see, traffic has been backed up for miles. This has been going on for quite some time now. I believe it's been going on for the past few hours, and uh, we've moved our reporters indoors for safety reasons, but we want to take a look at what's happening in other parts of Oakland, our Kristen Ayers is standing by. Uh, in another part of Oakland, uh, my producers just told me that at one point there were about 3,000 people that had taken over the streets. And Kristen Ayers is with us now. And Kristen, I was watching live video come in from our chopper shots, and you could see people just climbing over the freeway, just, just climbing over the freeway on ramp, you know, to, to get onto the freeway and to march in solidarity right down the freeway. And now, again, we're looking at some live pictures, and it looks as though uh, they're all kind of staging a sit-in, if you will. Uh, we're looking at pictures right outside that Walgreens. That is the Walgreens that is located off of Lakeshore 
Boulevard there in Oakland. And I want to get back to Kristen Ayers, who's been watching the scene unfold um, by MacArthur. Is that where you are, Kristen? I'm actually live out here at 14th and Broadway in downtown Oakland. This area was for some time shut down earlier today. This is where protesters initially amassed, amassed when all of this started. And you can see a few of them still out here tonight getting some honks from the street there. They have their signs out and are ready to go. There were some familiar skirmishes and flashes of vandalism that happened tonight after the verdict was announced. It began right here at 14th and Broadway downtown with what protesters called not a sit-in but a die-in. Protesters started by laying silently in the street. We have video of that here. Uh, their bodies were outlined with chalk to symbolize the death of Mike Brown. And then the marching began uh, once they had finished what they called a die-in. It was pretty compelling video of hundreds of people laying there in the intersection. Uh, the first clashes came when hundreds of marchers tried to first walk onto Interstate 880. They were stopped by police in riot gear. Then there were some tense and chaotic moments as protesters faced off with police. One person actually damaged a police car at one point and as the night wore on it got worse a plate glass window at a bank left shattered spray painters covered their faces and tagged several buildings one of them the offices of the Oakland Tribune but marchers we talked to said this was not about destruction it was about speaking out against injustice the total injustice of this country is is terrible there is no justice at the moment in the United States. Stand with Michael Brown against that killer pig who just got off tonight. Now, authorities haven't told us exactly how many arrests there were tonight, so we have no official word of that, but those marches did continue throughout the evening. As you saw, it eventually ended with marchers uh, going onto the freeway and shutting down traffic. That's still going on at this point back here at 14th and Broadway. As we said, a few protesters, a handful of them still out here tonight with their signs ready. This is a place where people tend to amass uh, after they've, they've come out from the further reaches of Oakland, so we are expecting to see more prote protesters out here at 14th and Broadway tonight, Veronica. All right, Kristen, so you aren't anywhere close to uh, what's happening right off of the Lakeshore exit, um, but I know that you've had a chance uh, most likely to speak with authorities. We've seen them all dressed in riot gear. Have they talked about their plans tonight, their plans moving forward at all? You know, we've seen Oakland police respond in a number of different ways during these protests. Uh, sometimes we've seen them actually trailing protesters and choosing not to get involved uh, once they start uh, rioting or breaking windows and that sort of thing. Tonight, Oakland police told me that they plan to be active and to actually address and arrest people who were breaking the law. As we were out here tonight, I have to say, as far as the marches going around downtown, we didn't see a lot of police uh, going after that directly. Um, but again, uh, you know, the night is young. These protests tend to continue throughout the night. And we do see just lines of police out there right off the freeway. Again, both sides of traffic. It looks like nothing is moving at this point. Um, you see right there, there are literally just rows of police there. Um, but it doesn't look as though anything is happening in terms of the police moving in, in terms of any arrests being made. Uh, like both our reporters have been saying, these protests look as though they have been mainly peaceful at this point. Uh, but again, we're going to stay on top of the situation here in Oakland and uh, continue to update you. In the meantime, there have been plenty of protests going on in Ferguson as well as the rest of the nation. And Nightbeat's Andre Borba has been following that part of the story and the decision that got us here in the first place, Andrea. Well, Veronica, people in Ferguson have been protesting for three months leading up to tonight. Just minutes after the prosecutor announced the grand jury's decision, this is what happened. Thousands of people in Ferguson took to the streets and shook this cop car. And then police fired back, launching tear gas at the protesters tonight. Tonight, President Obama called for calm. He also said this. The fact is, in too many parts of this country, a deep distrust exists between law enforcement and communities of color. Some of this is the result of the legacy of racial discrimination in this country. And this is tragic because nobody needs good policing more than poor communities with higher crime rates. Now, the grand jury needed at least nine votes to indict Officer Darren Wilson. The decision came down at 6.25 p.m. our time. The grand jury deliberated over two days, making their final decision. They determined that no probable cause exists to file any charge against Officer Wilson. 
Now, the prosecutor said witnesses made inconsistent statements, some of them completely refuted by physical evidence. So who was on that grand jury? Here's how it stacked up. Seven men, five women, three black people, nine white people. Legal analyst Paul Henderson says a lot of what we are seeing tonight, the anger, is because of the decision the prosecutor made to give the case to the grand jury in the first place. The prosecution at any time could have independently filed those charges and that was not done. It, you know, I think you put the community in a very difficult situation to try and understand and support the decisions that have been made. Now, the Brown family released a statement saying, we are profoundly disappointed that the killer of our child will not face the consequences of his actions. They went on to renew their calls for calm, urging protesters to channel their energy toward positive change. Veronica? Andrea, uh, we know that it's probably going to be extremely difficult for uh, Officer Darren Wilson to uh, continue on in the same role in the future. We also know that he actually just got married a few days ago. What else is on the agenda for him? Well, technically, he could return back to his job, but most people seem to think he will never work as a cop again. Sources tell CNN tonight he's already in talks with the city to resign, Veronica. Right which makes perfect sense. Andrea, we appreciate it. So we've been asking your thoughts on the grand jury's decision tonight. Do you think that the grand jury got it right? Uh, lots of people weighing in tonight. This one coming from Edward Dela Cruz, a tweet saying, based on the facts known through what has been released to the media, a great injustice has been done. While Earl Aquino says this, Michael Brown had the option to not blatantly shoplift, struggle with a police officer, and then resist arrest.